Build and Stream presents the 2010 Heroes of Conservation. We selected six finalists, and Toyota will award $5,000 to each hero and a new 2010 Forerunner to the winner in October. Hey, I'm Eddie Nickens, editor-at-large for Field and Stream Magazine, and I'm in the shadow of the Superdome smack in the middle of New Orleans, Louisiana. But nothing's been easy for the Big Easy lately. This region has suffered habitat loss, huge storms, and now a massive oil spill not far from the city center. But you have to square all of that with this. Heroes of Conservation finalist John Walther calls New Orleans home, and as long as that man can manhandle a boat, no one can count South Louisiana out. You give back to the resource and the resource provides for you. It's really a labor of love for me. John Walther, Eddie Nickens, Field and Stream. Good morning, welcome to Louisiana. We're gonna go out today and show you around the area. So right out of here? Right here, we're right out of downtown New Orleans. It's just the best of all worlds. Oh man, let's take a look. John is a leader in the Coastal Conservation Association, a group that works on behalf of Louisiana's unmatched wild maritime resources. Our goal, John's goal, my goal, everybody at CCA's goal is to make sure that we have a healthy fishery for generations to come. By building artificial reefs of limestone and even rubble from storm-damaged bridges, the Coastal Conservation Association is bringing back oysters and bringing back fish. It's a huge partnership effort to rebuild saltwater ecosystems from the ground up. Our inland waterways in Louisiana are soft bottom. There's no hard surface for the marine organisms to attach to. So when we make these artificial reefs, it creates a, a habitat, a food chain, in an ecosystem that provides for the fisheries resource. John Walthers has overseen reef building projects all across his native South Louisiana. The most recent one is under construction at Lake Pontchartrain, the hallowed fishing grounds of Cajuns, tourists, and New Orleans natives alike. We're looking at the demolition of the old Interstate 10 bridge between New Orleans and Mississippi. This bridge was heavily damaged in Hurricane Katrina. So as the old bridge is being demolished, we're capturing the concrete. We're breaking it into smaller pieces, loading it onto barges. It's going to be carried out into the lake to build a series of artificial reefs here. Well, it's a great situation, but a lot of hard work had to get us to this point. It's a long road to get us to this point. This is a long-term concept that we've had to use concrete materials for building artificial reefs. It was a collaboration of, of a lot of different um, governmental entities, CCA, Wildlife and Fisheries, DOTD, and it's a milestone for Louisiana to be able to use this material in this way rather than having it just be shipped off and put into a landfill. I think John's very humble, but uh, you know, he's also a go-getter and he's like a bulldog. You know, when they got a project and something going, you know, he says, you know, let's go get it done and he gets it done. We have what we call Cajun ingenuity. We try to, to put things together in, in ways that other people really don't think about. So it's just one of our ways of making a bad situation into a positive one. Hey, so John, tell me how this lake has been affected by this, this oil spill. Lake Pontchartrain is in real danger from the oil spill. In this area, we're using barges, booms, skimmers, all the technology available to stop the oil before it gets into Lake Pontchartrain. Without fishing, uh, this, this area would struggle a lot. If we're not capable of going out and catching 60 to 80 trout a day, you know, we don't really have a business here. 
John, it just seems like South Louisiana gets pounded, pounded, pounded. You guys just never give up. This is just another challenge. It's a man-made disaster now instead of a natural disaster. But we're going to rise to the challenge, and, and we're going to solve this problem, and we're going to get our fisheries back. I don't think John will ever stop his efforts to conserve the resources of Louisiana. This city has proven that it could pick up the pieces and build a future every bit as bright as the past. John Walther was determined that Louisiana's world famous marshes and world renowned fishing wouldn't disappear in a single lifetime, especially in his lifetime. When is it too late to save a piece of the wild? Never, as long as there's a hero of conservation around. In the next episode, we'll see how Hurricane Katrina's near knockout punch left behind the raw material for a new way of rebuilding Louisiana. And what's a trip to Lake Pontchartrain without a boat ride? We'll head out to some of South Louisiana's best known fishing grounds, all on the next Heroes of Conservation. <laughs>